Welcome to this video on an ETF trading system. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell, and then you'll be automatically reminded when new videos are uploaded. For this system, first of all, the ETFs have to have demonstrated long-term performance beating a benchmark index such as the S&P 500. This is because it's quite cheap to buy such an index tracker. So anything you'd buy instead of that needs to have superior performance. ETFs should not have excessive returns in the last two weeks. This avoids buying an ETF which might experience a pullback. So anything that has the current price over 5% above the 10 day simple moving average SMA we would just put that on a watch list. It would be too, too, I'd had too much of a recent run up to buy it straight away. I look for the best ETFs in three markets, in the US, in the developed world, which is ETFs that have a, a worldwide outlook, and then other, which might include single countries or emerging markets. And then I compare against a relevant benchmark for each one of those. I would sell anything with a price below the 50 day simple moving average and where the 50 day simple moving average is below the 200 day simple moving average. And then if no ETFs have positive returns over one month, then move all to cash. Because if you can't find anything in any sector, in any geography that is making positive returns, then there's clearly something wrong. So here, um, I have a drop down and I can select yearly returns or I can select monthly returns, quarterly returns, and it will pull out the best performing ETFs in the three markets and it will tell me what the tickers are for them. And then over here, it will tell me what the, which ETFs are showing by criteria at the moment and which ones are on the watch list. So if I go to the US, you see here that um, most of the ETFs are sell because of the price being below the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average being below the 50 day, uh, 50 day moving average being below 200. Uh, we have NAS NASDAQ is on the watch list. That's because it's a bit overextended currently because the price is 6% above 10 day moving average. Um, there's a buy for healthcare. And then, yeah, all the rest are sell. Uh, so, then if we look at the returns, uh, weekly returns positive, and again, these two are outperforming SP 500 monthly, marginal outperformance, but NASDAQ outperforms. Quarterly, quite a strong outperformance. Half year, strong outperformance, full year, again, yeah, strong outperformance, three year, uh, yeah, same thing. Uh, so then yeah, we look at a signal that says, well, if you had to pick one of all these, if you just based on one year returns, you'd go for this technology fund. Uh, if you went on the average of the quarterly, half year and full year returns, you'd go for the NASDAQ. Uh, this looks at mean reversion, which is where the one year return is greater than the three year returns. So it suggests that on a longer term basis, the performance isn't very good. But on a more shorter term basis, the fund has done well, but it, it might revert back to a mean to a more longer term growth rate. Um, so moving average over here and then price movements on different days. Um, these two are the same because it's around Easter, and so uh, it's the same prices for two days in a row because the markets are closed. <clears throat> Developed world. So we look at a whole range of ETFs here. Um, so private equity. So this would be private equity companies quoted on stock markets in the developed world. Digital security, same thing. Technology, healthcare, healthcare innovation cyber security, digitization, and so on. And then we've got the developed world market from Vanguard here. 
So some of them are neutral, where the price is above the 50-day uh, moving average, but the returns aren't quite strong enough yet to signify a buy. A lot of them are still on the sell. Um, and then we've got a couple of buyers here. One's a healthcare, uh, but it's quoted in dollars, which is a bit unfortunate, so there'll be higher trading costs with that. And then also this healthcare innovation is coming through as a buy. Um, and then down here, we've got various factor ETFs. So um, small cap there, monthly returns, quite good, but three year returns negative on small caps. ETFs don't tend to work very well on small caps because they just have trouble buying into very small illiquid companies. Um, so momentum not doing very well. Normally it does do very well and you can see some pretty good returns here, but it only rebalances every six months. So that's looking at companies that were showing good price growth in June, um, and sorry, December, yeah, and then it'll be rebalanced again at the end of June. So it can take quite a while to catch up with the current momentum shares. And as there's been so much turmoil in the markets, probably different companies than it was back in December. Um, so utility, minimum volatility. So uh, yeah, longer term, not too bad. I suppose that the, the lows aren't that low, the negatives here, um, but then the monthly return isn't that strong either. But uh, Still quite a useful one. Infrastructure uh, can depend on what the infrastructure is. I think sometimes it's like airports and oil pipelines. So some of them have been hit uh, with falling revenues, falling profits. Dividends, absolutely horrendous uh, with 22% negative return over three years. Uh, that does actually exclude the dividends that would have been received. But even so, um, dividend investing through ETFs is not recommended. Other, um, these are all rated sell, unfortunately. So we've got Eastern Europe, Euro 50, Australia, Japan, China. This is the whole world, including emerging markets. Um, we've got Europe Momentum Fund, and then emerging markets here. So um, where it's showing blanks, that means there's no data uh, which means that the share wasn't traded on the days that I'm pulling the data from Google Finance. So where we see that, it's a slight concern because it's possibly not that frequently traded and not that liquid, the ETF. So just need to be a little bit careful with that. So now I've selected the NASDAQ and I've just pulled out a data summary. So. Over 90 days, it's delivered 8.4% growth. RSI at 60, which is uh, it's a good number. It's not overbought. Um, and that's good. Uh, so it's above 10 day simple moving average, 5.7%. So that's why well, it's not trivial to buy at the moment. Um, then I've tried to look at the trend. So the ADX is below 20, so it's not really trending. And then the slope over the last I think it's about 100 or so trading days is slightly negative. Um, and then the R squared is very low. Maximum drawdown on this would have been 21%. So if you have invested at the last high and then held all the way down to the recent low, you would have lost 21% of your money, which isn't too bad, really, given uh, everything that's gone on. Average true range, 3% of the share price, uh, which is reasonable as well. Then I've got this that looks at the signals. So when when was it triggering a buy on my system, uh, which is this here. So when it went below the 5%. <clears throat> so recently it was triggering a buy. Before that, it was neutral because the price was below the 50 day moving average. Um, and then if we come down, triggering a buy in December and then again it's a bit overextended so when the price drops down here from 38,800 
38,300 back up to 39. So this is triggering a buy on this day because it's saying that, that it's had a temporary dip. So it's not too extended from the simple moving average. This is a candlestick chart of the NASDAQ. Uh, it's daily, it's over 20 days. You can do weekly ones as well. Um, it just pulls in the data for you, shows you what's going on. This one looks at, it's called Donchian channels, which are the 20 day high, 20 day low. So here in February, hitting the highs, really hugging the new highs. Then we have the fallout from the coronavirus, <clears throat> comes down, makes lower lows on the 20 day. Then we have the recovery and it's picked up the 20 day high again. Um, just some daily working data at the end. So there we are, we've got some, some shares to buy, one to watch, and hopefully the objective of the system is to find ETFs that are outperforming benchmark indices. So we're positioning ourselves in the strongest markets in the world.